Hey, what's going on, everybody? So everybody knows the R. Kelly trial is around the corner. I believe the first trial is going to happen in April, and that's going to be the Illinois or Chicago federal charges against R. Kelly. And I've done a legal analysis on that case, and I've laid out what I think the issues are. If you want to check that video out, please do so. I think I have a couple of, one may be called a quick legal analysis of R. Kelly's case. The other may be a deep analysis of the R. Kelly case. So definitely check those videos out uh, because they're going to be important because I lay out the elements in the case, right? So having seen those videos, I ask myself, how much time is this man really looking at? How much time do you think he'll actually get if he's convicted on any of these charges? How much time do you think he'll get if he's convicted in all four jurisdictions, right? Basically, just to recap, he's being indicted in the federal court in Illinois. He's also being indicted in the state court in Illinois. He's also being indicted in the federal court in New York. And then there's also some charges against him in Minnesota, I believe. Now, I think Minnesota is going to be the most frivolous case of all because when I saw it, I didn't even actually cover it on my, on my channel, I don't think. But when I heard the details, it just sounded really flimsy to me. Now... As I'm talking about how much time he's going to get, I'm not saying that he's going to lose. So definitely don't think this video is about R. Kelly losing and him getting time, right? This is more about looking at the possibility. Looking at the possibility that he might lose, right? And if he loses, how much time are we talking about? Now, I think when you do some comparisons, I could actually go and look at the actual statutes and come up with a guesstimation of how much time he's going to get. If anyone wants that, please let me know. Leave your question comments below on what you think about doing such an analysis where I'm looking at the statute. But I actually decided for this video to do something a little different and just give a guesstimation of how much time he's going to get based on people who've been prosecuted before him, right? So one of the people that we look at is Bill Cosby. And I think Bill Cosby got three to 10 years for his for losing his case and his uh, sexual assault case. And I think it was three to 10 because essentially it was only one person that he was actually being convicted of. Other women were allowed to testify, but it was only Adrian Constan that he was convicted of sexual assault. The other women were just kind of there to substantiate her claims, if you will. At least that's my belief. So I believe when they, when, when they actually gave him sentence, I think it was really just based off one person. Then we could take a look at Larry Nassar. So I've just done a video on the sexual assault case against Larry Nassar. And Larry Nassar is, is kind of on the extreme side. I think the dude ended up with like 175 years or something just absolutely crazy. Right? I think it's like 40 to 175. And I think he got that sentence twice in two different cases. I did a video on it. Check it out. I think it's called the sexual abuse case or a review of the sexual abuse case against Larry Nassar. Now, given that, I think Larry Nassar got the time that he got because the amount of victims that were involved. I think if I could, if my memory serves me correctly, it was somewhere around 250 ch children that he basically is alleged of abusing. I'm not going to say a legend in this case because so many came out and they all testified. So we'll just say 250 young women that are uh, young girls that he basically abused. So I think now, 
Again, I'm not saying R. Kelly is guilty, so don't get it twisted. Don't take this wrong. I'm just saying from a comparison standpoint, I think R. Kelly, if convicted, the accusations that are made uh, towards R. Kelly would fall closer to Larry Nassar. Because Larry Nassar and, and is it, not the same. I think Larry N Nassar was extreme, but I think R. Kelly is going to be in Larry's realm versus Bill Cosby's realm because Bill Cosby essentially was only convicted of one person with other women coming out substantiating his claims. Whereas Larry Nassar, were, he was basically accused of multiple children, although extreme and not anywhere near to what R. Kelly is being accused of. But the difference between Larry Nassar and R. Kelly is that R. Kelly was actually a, accused, alleged to have had sex with young women. They're going to play out the pin on young women. They're, they're going to, they're going to, there's no way around it. If he loses, they're going to basically rub that in his face. They're going to basically use the videos uh, to basically use against him in sentencing. They're going to use it in the trial too, but in sentencing, they're going to bring up the videos. They're going to bring up the peeing. They're going to, they're going to bring up as much dirt as they can to kind of justify giving him some type of astronomical numbers. I don't think he's going to get 175 years like Larry Nassar, but because he was to have been alleged to have sex with young women, whereas Larry Nassar was essentially just penetrating young women with his finger, I think in some ways they're going to look at the R. Kelly case if convicted. Again, this is a scenario where we're talking about what time he'll get if he's convicted. If convicted, they are going to basically make him look like an absolute monster. And they're going to focus on the young women that he's been accused of having sex with, right? Now, of course, in throughout my videos, I think I pretty much show how th those uh, pedophile cases or the sexual assault case against young women were pretty old. He beat them. And the stuff that's coming up now are basically, in my opinion, in my opinion, the stuff that is being brought towards him now are unsubstantiated allegations of sexual abuse, uh, women that he basically had relationships with that were disgruntled because of relationship ends. If you listen to some of the cases or you listen to some of the stories, they really just don't add up. But that's not what this video is about. And I'm not saying R. Kelly is going to win. I'm not saying that he's going to lose. But what I am saying is what's going to be played out is the allegations of him having sex with minors. That's what's going to make an impression on this case. When, If you go back and you look at the videos that I did, does the evidence against R. Kelly mean anything or the, the new evidence against R. Kelly mean anything, you'll see. And if you also go back and look at the, 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 the what, what did I call it? I, if you go back and you look at the legal analysis, there you go, the legal analysis of the R. Kelly case, you'll see in those cases they actually focus on the young younger women and they call them Jane Doe 1, Jane Doe 2, Jane Doe 3, Jane Doe 4. That's their focus. So they're, in my opinion, they're going to bring all these other women in who, in my opinion, many of them don't have a case. Some of them may have a civil case, but there's no criminal case that the older women have. And they're going to bring those women in, and then they're going to use them to basically have an excuse to bring in the old sexual abuse cases against the young women, that some of which he's actually already beat. So the focus, needless to say, is going to be on the young women. 
And I think because there has been alleged multiple young women, I believe they are going to try to hit him with about not less than 30 years to up to 100 years. Now, if you disagree with this, leave your questions, comments below. And again, please keep in mind this video is, a, is not about saying R. Kelly is guilty and that he's going to lose. That is not what this video is about. This video is taking a hypothetical look in a scenario where R. Kelly loses and he's basically charged and sentenced. So let me know. What do you think? How much time do you think R. Kelly will get if he loses any of these cases or if he loses all of the cases? I'd say if he loses all of the cases, I'd say the time that he would get combined, my guesstimation, and again, I'm not a lawyer I, and I'm not basing this opinion on any uh, necessarily on facts. Or I'm not basing it on any statutes that I have. If you guys want me to do an analysis on the amount of time he would get in relation to the statute, please leave your questions in the comments below and I'll do that. But right now, I'm really just looking at people who've had sexual abuse cases in the past, and I'm I'm kind of comparing R. Kelly, uh, you know, to those people, and I'm coming up with a guess of how much he'll get. Now, if he gets convicted of all those cases, I'm not saying that he will. I'm not saying that he won't. I believe he will end up with about 120 years combined, right? Because I think in each of those cases, they're designed to ensure that he gets a lot of time just to make sure that if he beats one of them, they're still going to make sure that he gets the maximum amount of time in the other case, right? So, you know, that's my personal opinion. Let me know what you think. Leave your question, comments below. Let me know how, how much time you think R. Kelly will get if he loses. I'm not saying he's going to lose. I'm not saying he's going to win. But in a hypothetical situation, how much time do you think he'll get? Leave your questions, comments below. I want to hear from you.